today on Transformation with Pastor Andy Ikebedo. Last night, the Holy Spirit interrupted me and said, share this message. And I'm, I obeyed him. I'm going to teach something I taught during the pandemic when we were all locked down. We called it Flourish. How to thrive in dark seasons. How to thrive, not succeed, sorry, not survive, not to avoid dark seasons, but how to thrive irrespective of the dark seasons. Lift up your hands to heaven and say, my father, we don't take your presence for granted. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Before we sit down, let's open our Bibles to Psalms chapter 92, verses 12 and 13. What does he say? He says what? The righteous shall flourish by the palm tree. He shall grow by the cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Slap your neighbor a high five. Say neighbor. Get ready to flourish. Get ready to flourish. I read somewhere about someone who gave the wife 30,000 naira to go and do shopping, to buy groceries, to buy food for the family. And when the wife came back with her bag, and the bag was not even full, so he was sure that the wife didn't spend the money that he gave her. And he started to question the wife. What happened to the money I gave you? I don't want to say sit down and brought her calculator out. And brought out all the things she bought. And by the time they finished the calculation, he discovered that even though she didn't buy much, but she exceeded the money he gave her. And she had already added 3000 of her money. Anybody who pretends that the times we live in Nigeria right now are not challenging, is negligently culpable. Times are challenging. You know, our civil servants are still, are still earning what they were earning when dollar was 350. Now dollar is 600 or something. You can't really buy anything again in the market. Sometimes I wonder how people survive. I wonder people who are working as civil servants and they don't even get paid. So, there are a lot of fear in the society. Fear of tomorrow. People don't even know what else to do. And a lot are japarring, you know, they are. Is it the news we hear of violence? Just the other day, people got out in church like this. And people entered the house of God and massacred people. So if those such news does not bother you, you might be high on something. People no longer travel safely on the road. Now in Anambra State, the easiest way to commit suicide is to go to Anambra with a police escort. You won't come back. So we're actually living in dark times. But I bring you good news from the throne room of glory. You know what the Bible says? Where they say that's a casting down? You and I shall say that's a lifting up. <clears throat> so beloved, relax. The good hand of the Lord is resting upon you. Amen. He will keep you. Amen. I said he will keep you. Amen. I said the good hand of the Lord is resting upon you mightily Amen. and it will keep you. Amen. And no matter how dark this season gets, because I think it's going to get darker before it gets brighter. No shaking. You will thrive in this season. I said you will thrive in this season. 
The Bible tells us in Psalm 84, verse 11, it says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. Lord God is what? A sun and a shield. Which means in dark times, we have a different kind of illumination. When other places are dark, believers will have a different kind of what? Illumination. Different kind of light. And that light is from God. For the Lord God is what? A sun and a shield. We are protected. Say, I'm protected. I'm protected. The Bible says, that He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I shall say of the Lord that the Lord is my what? He is my what? Refuge. Because my refuge, I shall fear no evil. When the enemy shall come up against you like a flood, what happens? The Spirit of the Lord shall raise a standard. Say, neighbor, neighbor. No, shaking. no shaking. The Lord will give grace and glory, and no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. The Lord is not about to start to withhold anything from you. Get ready. The Lord will blow your mind. This is in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I can't hear your Amen. amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. This season, you will encounter superior grace and glory. Amen. Grace and glory. Amen. What is grace? What is grace? Receiving what you, do, you are not what qualified for. This season, the Lord will give you businesses, open doors, favors that you are not qualified for. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I can't hear your amen. Amen. And say, we're going to give you glory. So he that dwelleth in the glory realm, no evil shall come near you. Are you still here? Shall glory to Jesus. So I said, in this season, you will flourish, you will thrive in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us from this text we just read, it says, for the righteous shall do what? Flourish like what? Like what? Like what? Why the palm tree? Why the palm tree? Because the palm tree is resilient in nature. Very resilient. It doesn't give up. It doesn't die. Do you know that even if you set a palm tree on fire, at the scent of rain the next season, it, it, it resurrects. But they say it shall flourish like the palm tree. It means that every part of the palm tree flourishes, Right? Now, every part of the palm tree is, is, is useful. Do you get it's what? Useful. If you cut, that, cut down the, the, the palm fronts, you can make broom and baskets from it, right? Raffia from it, right? Come on, are you still here? Even when you burn it, that's where people get what they used to cook, cook food. Then the palm itself, the palm fruit, you get oil from it, right? From the pulp, you get oil. From the shell, you can get what you can use to mix and, and pour concrete. <laughs> Aggregates. The kernel gives you PKO, oil. The vegetable oil you eat today is from palm kernel oil. Then the chaff from the kernel is not wasted. It's what it used to do, what is called PKC. PKC means palm kernel cake, which is the big base product for animal feed. Are you still here? So it means that when the Bible says that the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, it means that every aspect of the righteous man or a righteous woman can prosper. Things that you don't even pay attention to may be the things God is going to use to bring you out of this dark season. Do you hear what I said? I said, every aspect of your life will thrive this season. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So the palm tree can flourish and thrive in adverse conditions. They cannot be broken by storms. Thank God for the song they sang today. That my hallelujah will sound what? Louder and louder, even in the face of the storm. They can withstand storms. You too, you can withstand storms. There's somebody here going through storm in your marriage, storm, on, storm in your business or in your work, 
I came here today with good news to tell you that God has already blessed you with everything you will require to get out of the storm. You hear me? You hear me? Storms. At special times, as the eagle, when other birds see the storm coming or hear about the storm coming, what do they do? They hide. But what the eagle, what do they do? The eagles fly towards the storm and they lift themselves above the storm and they spread their wings and they start to soar. Soar means they're, they're no longer flying. It means that something is now carrying them. Storms carry eagles. This storm will carry you. I said this storm will elevate you. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the way, I was so shocked to hear that an egg goes for 18 air. Egg. I thought it was a lie. I have heard people talking, say, ah, I bought egg, 18 air. 18 air, I said, egg. I said, this guy is a thief. Is it true? Egg, 18 air. So how, how are people coping? Beloved, you are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Your flourishing is not determined by what's happening around you. Your economy is different. Say my economy is different. I cannot hear you. Say my economy is different. Come on, shout it. Say my economy is different. All right, so no matter how dark t- times are, you're going to flourish. So let me say two things or three things about darkness, and I'll say one or two things that we must do to thrive in this dark season. Next Sunday, we'll continue from there. Is he okay? Now, the first thing I want to talk, ab- to talk about about darkness is this. Psalm 18 verse 11 tells us something. The first thing I want to say about dark season is this. Number one, Psalm 18 verse 11, what does this say? What does he say? He said he made darkness, what? His secret place. His pavilion round about him where dark waters and thick. This is talking about God. So what does it mean? That God has made dark seasons. His secret place. Which means... Dark seasons are seasons where God is hiding in a sacred place. So they are seasons when we ought to seek after God. So, anytime you hear about dark season, it should tell you this is the season to seek after. This is the season for you to do what? Build your own secret place where you meet with him. I see here. If you're able to find God in dark season, then you will thrive. You will flourish. If you're able to grow your faith, grow in revelation, grow in fellowship and koinonia with God in dark seasons, then you have flourished already. Is he okay? Come on, is he okay? So hear this. So God hides himself in darkness. So, we don't only encounter God in good times. One of the most important times you must encounter God is in dark times, dark season. Most of you will bear me witness that when things are going well for you, you don't ever spend time, most time praying. But once things are not working well, you start to pray more. Is he okay? That's not right, but that's a survival mechanism. Is he okay? Is he okay? But guess what? If all that you got from your dark time and dark season is that you found God, then you survived and you thrived and you flourish. Are you still here? So that trouble in your family, that trouble in your marriage, that trouble on your job, the trouble in your academics, if in the face of that trouble, you are able to find God, then you have survived. So the enemy sent things to hurt you. The enemy sent this into your marriage to, to disrupt your marriage, to make you lose your peace. But guess what? If in that problem, if in that storm, you are able to find God, then you succeeded. Storms should tell us it is time to go deeper 
in God, to go deeper in prayer. These times are not the times to gossip, to complain, to hang around. These are times to dig deep. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is the time to do what? To dig deep. Personal relationship. Personal relationship. It's the time for you to build and strengthen your secret place. Are you see here? Are you see here? So the Bible here tells us that God hides himself in darkness. So it means that the place where you thought that you would die is actually the place where you encounter God. You didn't hear what I said. The place the enemy planned for you to die, the place of your, of your, of your destruction, is actually the place you'll encounter God if you seek after God. You hear me? You hear me? I encountered Jesus one-on-one -on -one at a time of my darkest tribulation and darkest time, locked up in prison all by myself, contemplating suicide for months. It was then that Jesus walked into my life and he changed the trajectory of my life forever. The things that the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it around for your good. And the way it happens that if in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your dark season, you decide to seek more of God, to complain less, stop your pity parties, stop the crying, stop the worrying, and look for him. You hear me? Look for him. Shall glory to Jesus. Shall glory to Jesus. I don't know who you are. You have been going through a lot lately. But hear my voice as the voice of a mad prophet. I may not shout it, but I'm speaking like a prophet right now. Get ready. God is about to show up massively on your behalf. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Well, it is not for everyone. I said there's someone here going through a season of unprecedented trouble, challenges, dark times. That's what you can't even see. You can't even see your way forward. Everything looks bleak. There's no hope. But I came here today to tell you to get ready. God is about to show up and show off on your behalf. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. If you dare to stop fighting God, stop accusing God, stop complaining, stop rehearsing your problems, and start to tell your problems about your God, and start to spend more time with God personally, He's going to show up for you, and He will show up for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. There are treasures hidden in darkness. If that's all I say today, I think I've said enough. Every dark season comes with treasures. Every dark season comes with treasures. But this darkness they are about to bring to Nigeria is bringing something new. People that never believed in the system, people that never registered, people that never voted, they are now all registering. And there is panic in the enemy territory. What is happening right now is unprecedented. And it will go down in history as the largest movement of youth in black Africa. If that's all we get from this dark time, Nigeria will flourish. If, we can, if all we are getting right now is to get the youth engaged in their future, then we have gained a lot. There are treasures in darkness. Say neighbor. There are treasures in darkness. Isaiah 55 verse 3 in New Living Translation. What does it say? I will give you treasures hidden, secret riches. So which means there are some treasures you can never see unless they are dark seasons. That's what you call secret riches. That is not open. When everything is okay. <laughs> Are you still here? Are you still here? Let me say it again. There are treasures. 
You can never witness or experience unless we go through dark seasons. I'll give you what? Treasures hidden. Let's read it like English students. I'll give you treasures hidden in darkness. No? What does it say? I can't hear you. I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you in the darkness. In the darkness. In the darkness. And in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness. So, which means when the enemy sends an onslaught against you, there are treasures in his onslaught. Ah, uh, you, uh, you hear me? When the enemy attacks your marriage, there are treasures in his attack. When he attacks your business, there are treasures in that attack. But it takes a man of the spirit to sit down and say, God, show me the treasures. What I'm going to write down, Lord, where are the treasures there? When your friends start to malign you, gossip with you, sorry, gossip with your name, backbite you, there are treasures. Maybe God is telling you, there are treasures, maybe there are some of them you need to cut off from. Did you don't hear me so? Every attack of darkness comes with treasures. I'll tell you that. I know that. I've experienced it. Every time darkness assails you, there are treasures in that darkness. But the man of the spirit is not bothered about the attack. He's more focused on the treasures that come with the attack. Remember when the enemy came up against Israel and laid a siege round about them that things got so bad hmm? that there was no food, that people started to eat their seed. Women were killing their children to eat. And the man of God came and said, as long as the Lord liveth, by this time tomorrow, flowers, food will be so, so, so abundant everywhere. One man that's, that's as learned as the professor in the house today said, even if God opens the windows of heaven, it's not happen. He was thinking that the blessing will come from heaven. What he didn't know that was that the enemy came with the blessing. It's not for everybody. When you grow up, you get it. The enemy came with a blessing. When, they, when finally they came to the enemy's camp, they found that they have what? Killed themselves and they have run away. What happened? The Bible said they spent three days in carrying things. The enemy came to kill them, but the enemy didn't know that God had orchestrated a wealth transfer. Did you hear me so? They came to kill them, but they didn't know that God was planning a wealth transfer. Darkness came with treasures. At the right time, darkness abandoned the treasures and what? Fled. And the people of God collected the loot. Say neighbor. neighbor. Are you ready? ready? For what you're about to collect. Yeah. Neighbor. neighbor, there are treasures in darkness. Not just darkness, the darkness. What the enemy has planned against you, there are treasures coming from it in the name of Jesus Christ. And he called it secret riches. Secret riches. There are some things about yourself you will never discover until you go through challenges. There are some giftings you have you will never know you have until you are challenged and pushed to the world. There's more to you than eyes can see. So, dark times, challenges and trouble and storms, what do they do? Oftentimes, they reintroduce us to us. They say that necessity is what? The mother of what? Invention. Most times, you will never know how massively gifted you are until you are faced with a severe trouble. Are you still here? If all you do in this dark time is to discover your talent, your latent gifts, 
your latent abilities that have been dormant, then you are doing well. So, so, so say neighbor, neighbor. You are doing well. So, one thing you must do in this season is that you must start to ask yourself, come on, what do I have that I have not used yet? <laughs> Who do I have that I have not used yet? What experience do I have that I have not used yet? What do I know I can do very well but I have hidden because I thought it had no value? Are you still here? In today's Nigeria, anything can make you a millionaire. Whether if it's more and more, you can throw down well. You can cook, you make more and more very well. You can make you a millionaire. But the point is that we have not elevated more and more to the place of its importance. <laughs> and we don't do numbers. How much is one, one wrap of moi moi? Come on, guys. I'm deviating now. How much one wrap of moi moi? Ah, uh, talk to me, guys. I want to liberate a young lady now from poverty. How much is one wrap of moi moi? Huh? 400 naira. 500. Moi moi 500. For where? Who they buy moi moi for 500 naira? 100 naira. 50 naira. 200 naira. 100 naira. I'm sure that the moi moi they sell for 100 naira nine Nigeria is no moi moi but, but my my. There's my my and there's moi moi. <laughs> because I know crunch is about 350 naira, 400 naira. Yeah? Crunch is about 400 naira. So if crunch is selling moi moi for 400 naira and what you're buying is 100 naira, it's my my. But there's nothing wrong with my my. My my get market and moi moi get market. So as far as, far as my my gets more market. But as my child, as, as someone who's part of us here, don't do my my, do my moi. My moi. My moi. <laughs> eh? You hear me so? I just gave you a business secret. Do what? My moi. Put something more to the my, my, so they can become my, my. But so, 200 naira. So, how many my, moys will you sell? I will give you one million naira. Bring out your calculators. How many my moys? 5,000, right? You see, it is very easy to become a millionaire. Just 5,000 moy moy. So as old as you are, as big as you are, as educated as you are, you cannot sell 5,000 moy moy in a year. 5,000 moy moy, 5,000 divided by 355 days. Yeah, Mrs. Benidon, you like, you like money. <laughs> tell me, tell me, go ahead. I like the way you're working, please. Three, <laughs> divided by eh? 40. 40. It's a lie. It's, it's not true. You didn't get it right. 5,000 divided by 3, 5, 14. So all you do to have a total of 1 million a year is to sell 14 more money every day. Are you seeing that the reason why you are poor is not your village people? You see here? Just 14 a day. 14 a day. To have a total of 1 million naira. So I say, light come. So I say, light come. Imole deo. Imole deo. Imole deo. So if you sell 28 more and more every day, 2 million naira in a year, 
So at least your account will have a turnover of two million naira. You have become a millionaire, no beer. At least you have a turnover of a million. So are you seeing why? Are you seeing why? Are you seeing why these times are good? Because if you got a job, what I'm saying now will not make sense to you, right? And your job every day, you wear suit, wear tie, and you're, you're walking like him. <laughs> a scarecrow. Yes. Speaking English, end of the month, they give you 70,000. That will not even take you home. So, that you left school for five years and there's no job is a blessing. It's a blessing. Because it will now push you to think in words. And to cook 30 wraps of moi moi, you don't need an investment of more than 5,000 naira. So you see, every time you recharge your phone with 10,000 naira, you are recharging and sending away your millions. Use that 10,000 and start a my moi business. Sell to your neighborhood. Call it anything you want to call it. Call it anointed my moi. Say, so if you eat this moi moi, you will not purge for forever. This moi moi will make you lose weight. Are you lying? Moi moi makes people to what? Lose weight. This moi moi will not allow you to have high blood pressure. Because protein does not allow you to have that kind of cholesterol poisoning. All right. So, I deviated and my time is up. But I'm sure somebody got, got something from this. Yes. It may not be moi moi. It may just be something else. It may just be something else. Now somebody in this church, he makes, he makes um, buns and, and egg roll. And he carries it and he goes out to markets to sell it. He produces himself, he's a young man, and he goes to markets to sell. And when he, so I was asking him, how do you sell? He said, when he gets to a market, that his voice is loud. He will start to talk about the product he's selling, and he sells off. So I now started asking him, so what can we do to increase your sales? I was started talking. So I told him, okay, since your voice is loud, let me give you something that is louder than your voice. Let me give you a megaphone. So once you come to a market and you open your megaphone, everybody in the market will hear what you're saying. The things that will make you thrive in this season will be unconventional things. Let me tell you something. When they say there's a recession, It does not mean that money just disappeared from the economy. Pay attention. When they say there's a, a recession, it doesn't mean that money just disappeared and flew to heaven from the economy, no. What it means is that money changed hands. Money changed direction. And started flowing where it wasn't flowing before. So the conventional places where people used to make money, they won't make it there again. It changed direction. That money is still there. That's why people are still becoming billionaires. It is still in the economy. But it's, it's no longer flowing the way it used to flow, where it used to flow. You have to find out where it is flowing now. And if you're here and you're a businessman, you never check statistics of Nigerian economy. You're not doing business. That is why every, every digital marketer, that's something they do. Before they write their marketing uh, advert, before they catch it, they go to social media and Google, top trending things in Nigeria. Top trending things in Nigeria. So once they find one of the top trending things and link the, that trend to the advert, the force of the trend will affect the advert. If you Google 
the 20 most bought items in Nigeria or in Africa in the last 12 months, you will not see where money is going to. You will not see where money is going to. But the average Christian will never do that. He'll be busy doing die, fall, get up, jump up. Come on. Come on. Come on. It doesn't work like that. We pray to receive divine insights. We pray for revelation. We pray to receive innovation. But once we have done that, we must do the needful. I don't care how dark this season, uh, this season is. You will prosper. Amen. You will thrive. Amen. If you remember that God hides in darkness, that dark times are times to seek God personally. Dark times are times to build up your secret place. That's where you meet with God. Then secondly, for today, if you look for the treasures in darkness, you will thrive. If you look for the treasures in darkness, you will thrive. If you look for the treasures in darkness, you will thrive. Remember what I said earlier, that every dark time, every darkness comes with treasures. What the enemy designed to kill you is actually what God allowed to promote you. If only you can discover vital lessons, vital keys that you can, you can learn from the present challenge. Remember I said, if this dark season will push you to start to ask questions, what did I carry that I'm not yet using? What can I do? Then you'll have benefited immensely from this. Lift up your hands and say, my father, enlighten my understanding. Teach me how to discover opportunities in challenging times, in troubling times, and in dark seasons. Everlasting father, Teach me to maximize the opportunities I discover. My Father, give me the grace to pursue what I've discovered in the name of Jesus. Everlasting Father, I thank you for the word we spoke today. Lord, hasten to perform your word. Let testimonies arise from today's meeting. Let people testify in the coming weeks, in the coming months, in the coming years that my business, my life turned around because of the word I heard. In Jesus' precious and matchless name I pray. Amen. And somebody here shouted the loudest, Amen. amen. Share glory to Jesus. Glory. Say neighbor. neighbor. Stop, complaining. Stop complaining. Find God. Find God. Ask, him Ask him questions. Then go to work. Go to work. Amen. amen. This is a House on the Rock about production. Be part of any of our live transforming services every Sunday, 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. or 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. or 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. At 3 Covenant Close behind Rufus Obi Chemist along Abowe Road, Abba, Abia State. You can also follow us on Facebook at House on the Rock, Abba, and on Instagram at HOTR. Abba. For prayers and counseling, please call 0810-892-4731. Again, 0810-892-4731. Stay blessed.